In the human intestinal tract, it's hard to believe, but there's trillions of bacteria, fungi, and viruses that live in there. And it's kind of maybe disturbing to think about it, but it's actually important. And these bacteria live in a symbiotic, harmonious state with humans. And for humans, it's important because these bacteria help with digestion and even can help with the immune system. Now, sometimes there's a disruption in this balance between the bacteria and the, and the human host, and that can lead to some problems. It can lead to things like obesity, malnutrition, inflammatory bowel disease, and even some cancers have been associated with it. Exercise and physical activity are lifestyle habits that have been demonstrated to be able to alter the gut bacteria in a beneficial way for humans. And in this video, we'll go over some of this. Hi, I'm Dr. Edmund Kleeman. I'm an orthopedic surgeon here in New York City. I specialize in sports medicine and arthroscopic surgery. Why is gut bacteria so important for humans? So number one, it's very critical for helping us in digestion such as helping us absorb vitamins and minerals. Now, in addition, there are some fibers and complex carbohydrates that we can't break down without those bacteria. And one of these nutrients it helps break down into is called short chain fatty acids. And there are different kinds. One of them is called butyrate, and it's very important for health as studies have shown. Some examples that it can help with proliferation of the cells and the lining of the gut. It can help by protecting the barrier of the gut uh, from this bacteria to the bloodstream, and it can also help with the immune system. Another benefit that we get from the bacteria in the gastrointestinal tract is that it can help protect us from bad pathogens that are harmful, because if we have good bacteria, they can help crowd out the pathogens that can cause harm, they can outcompete for nutrients and things like that, so to prevent bad actors from getting into our gut system. Another benefit of the gut bacteria is that it can help train the immune system as to what's harmful substances and safe substances. And then finally, there's some emerging evidence that the bacteria can help in the production of neurotransmitters or other substances that can affect our cognition, our behavior, and our mood. How does general fitness and exercise influence our gut bacteria and therefore maybe influence our health in general? So there are three components of this I'd like to touch upon. The first is just our baseline fitness level and studies have shown that people who have higher fitness that is looked at and measured by something called VO2 max, that those patients who have better fitness have been identified to have higher rates of production of butyrate. And we had mentioned before in this video that butyrate is a, is a component that the bacteria can make that is very helpful for our bodies. Another component of fitness could be our muscle mass. How much muscle do we have? And here other studies have shown that people who have higher muscle mass compared to those with less muscle mass have a more diverse microbiome uh, and therefore having more diverse bacteria in the gut has been shown to also be good for health as these different bacteria can provide different beneficial effects for us. Now, the second component that I want to discuss is that the actual act of doing exercise and being physically active also has an impact on the composition of the bacteria in the gut to help push it towards a better composition to bacteria that are more helpful to us. For example, maybe bacteria that make more of the short chain fatty acids. For example, one study found that daily physical activity volume and intensity or positively associated with the relative abundance of certain bacteria that are big producers of butyrate, the short chain fatty acid in the human gut. So another study that looked at women who were performing exercise over a six week period of time, they were doing it three days a week for about 60 minutes at a moderate to vigorous intensity. And they found that those people who were doing this level of exercise, that they had more bacteria, the good bacteria that were producing butyrate compared to those people who are sedentary. Now, what's interesting is that studies show that in these people who are being physically active, if they stop being physically active over the course of about six weeks, the benefits wash out and their gut bacteria tend to revert back to the kind of someone who would be sedentary. So it's important for us to maintain a physically active lifestyle in order to maintain this better bacteria in our gut. Now, the third component I wanna discuss is that the bacteria that live in a person's gut 
may actually affect how responsive they are to exercise. So it's interesting, exercise can affect the gut bacteria, but someone's gut bacteria may affect how they respond to exercise. So there was a study that looked at patients and they were randomized to either being sedentary or doing a 12-week exercise program. And so then they looked specifically at the people in the exercise program and they looked at the ones who responded with benefits to exercise and those who didn't respond. For example, the people who responded to the exercise showed about a 43% decrease in their fasting insulin compared to those who did exercise but were non-responders. And so what's interesting is that they found when they looked at the gut bacteria that the gut bacteria in the people who did not respond looked similar to those people who were sedentary. This is an interesting finding in this one study, but a lot more research needs to be done for us to understand this a little bit better. Let's wrap up this video and go over a few key points. Number one, surprisingly, there are trillions of bacteria, fungi, and viruses that live in our gastrointestinal tract. Number two, gut bacteria are important for several reasons. Number one, it helps with digestion. Number two, it helps with the immune system. Number three, it helps protect us against bad bacteria. And number four, it does help with some neurotransmitters that can affect our cognitive and brain health. Number three, sometimes it can be an imbalance between the gut bacteria and the host. They're not working well together, and this can lead to problems like metabolic problems, like obesity, or sometimes can lead to inflammatory problems. Number four, higher levels of aerobic fitness and muscle fitness are associated with healthier gut microbes. And number five, exercise and physical activity are associated with a greater abundance of the healthy bacteria and production of short chain fatty acids, which are good for our health. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please click the like button below and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you in my next video or in my office.